Dear students, in this video, I am going to discuss the physics model question paper issued by PU board for the year 2022-23. Let's have a look on the first question. For large distances from a short dipole, the electric field due to it depends on the distance from it as. Here we need to find out electric field due to the short dipole, which is directly proportional or inversely proportional to its distance. So, we know that electric field at a point on the axial line is E equals to 1 by 4 plus 2 R divided by R square minus A square whole square. But it is a short dipole so that R is very very greater than A or else we can say the distance between the two charges is very very small compared to the point of consideration from the center of the dipole. So, that we will get E equals to 1 by 4 plus 2 P divided by R cube. So, we will get E is inversely proportional to R cube. Not only that, when you consider the equatorial line, we can get E equals to minus 1 by 4 perhaps not P divided by R square plus A square to the power of 3 by 2. For a short dipole, we can get E equals to 1 by 4 perhaps not 2 P divided by R cube. Here also we can see E is inversely proportional to R cube. Not only that, when we consider any variables, that is E equals to 1 by 4 perhaps, 4 perhaps not P divided by R cube, square root of 1 plus 3 ka square theta. This is the expression used to find out the electric field due to the dipole at any point that is at any point due to the dipole. So, that here also you can see E is inversely proportional to R cube. So, that our option is B that is B is the right answer. Let us look at the next question. Which one of the following is the unit of capacitance? We know that farad is the unit of capacitance, Coulomb is the unit of charge, volt is the unit of electric potential or we can say potential difference or we can say it is the unit of electromotive force and the Tesla is the unit of magnetic flux density. So, now we can say that the unit of capacitance is option A that is Farad. So, let us go to the next question. An example for polar molecule is, we know that a polar molecule is the molecule in which the center of the positive and negative charges do not coincide. Examples for those is H2O and HCl. By this one we can mark directly that is water is the correct answer that is D is the right answer because it is a polar molecule and if it is non-polar that is non-polar molecules are the molecules in which the centers of the positive and negative charges coincide. Examples for them O2, N2, H2 and CO2. So, here the remaining rest options that is A, B, C are non-polar molecules whereas D is the polar molecule. So, our option is D. Let us look at the next question that is the resistance of a carbon resistor is 12 into 10 raised to 5 plus or minus 10 percent is ohm. The color of the first band of the resistor. So, we know that the first and the two second represents colors and this power represents the multiplier and this plus or minus 10 percent it is showing tolerance. Here one represents brown brown color and 2 represents the red color and 5 represents the green, third band represents green and then fourth band that is tolerance represents the 10 percent. So, here we can see silver color. This is a color code for this given carbon resistor. So, here they are asking you the color of the first band. So, first band color is brown. So, option C is the right answer. So, moving to the next question, the force on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field is maximum when the angle between the velocity of the charged particle and magnetic field is. We know that the force experienced by the charged particle in the magnetic field is BQV sin theta, where theta is the angle between the magnetic field and velocity vector. So, here the F becomes maximum, that is force becomes maximum when the sin theta becomes maximum, that is sin theta should be equal to sin theta should be equal to 1. So, theta should be equal to 90 degree. So, that option B is the right answer. So, moving to the next question that is identify the wrong statement among the following options about the magnetic field lines. They form closed loops. So, we know that when we draw or when we join the points we get a pattern of lines which emerge from the north pole and enters the south pole as shown in the figure you can see that. So, that they form a closed loop. So, this is the correct option and the tangent drawn to the magnetic field line at any point gives the direction of the magnetic field at that point. Yes, when we draw the tangent at any point 
which gives us the direction of the magnetic field at the point of tangent that is tangent where we are going to draw now they can intersect each other that means when they intersect uh, there would be two directions of magnetic field at the point of intersection but which is not possible that means at the point of intersection we can see two directions which is absurd so that this option is not correct this is also correct now outside the magnet they go from north pole to the south pole yes here you can see that outside the magnet they go from north pole to the south pole so our option is c so here a is correct b is correct and d is correct but c is not correct so that the correct answer for this question is c moving to the next question that is the law which gives the polarity of the induced emf in electromagnetic induction is gauss's law in magnetism ampere's circuital law faraday's law and lenz's law you know that the gauss law in magnetism which is used to find out the field due to uniformly charged straight wire or a thin uniformly charged infinite plane sheet or uniformly charged thin spherical cell like this in the same way the ampere circuit law is used to determine the magnetic induction due to long current carrying wire and it is also used to find out the magnetic field inside a toroid and which is used to find out the magnetic field created by a long current carrying conduct conducting conducting cylinder and the faraday's law you know that this is a basic law of electromagnetism and which helps us to predict the magnetic field would interact with the electric circuit to produce an emf so but lenz's law we know that the lenz's lenz's law is the most convenient method to determine the direction of the induced current so we can say direction of the induced current is nothing but the polarity of the induced emf so that the correct option for this question is d that is lenz's law lenz's law which gives the polarity of the induced emf in the electromagnetic induction okay moving to the next question the principle behind the working of ac generator is electromagnetic induction eddy current hysteresis and torque on a current loop so you know that the generator which works on the principle of electromagnetic induction now look at this inductors transformers electric motors and generators all works on the principle of electromagnetic induction and the eddy current effect which is used uh, in the electricity meter ordinary electricity meter and uh, the hysteresis which is used in electric motor schemic triggers and thermostats multi vibrators etc not only that the torque on a current loop this principle is used in the motors okay so for this question we can say a is the right answer that is the ac generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction so moving to the next question that is in the case of alternating voltage applied to a resistor when we apply the alternating voltage to the resistor what happens we know that when we apply the alternating voltage to the resistor we get i equals to i naught sin omega t you can see that here v equals to v naught sin omega t and here we have i equals to i naught sin omega t that means these two that v and i are in the same phase current as well as voltage are in the same phase when we connect it to the inductor so the voltage leads the current by 90 degree or else the current lags the voltage by 90 degree and here when we connect to capacitor we get i equals to i naught sin omega t plus phi by 2 that is nothing but current leads the voltage or voltage lags the current by 90 degree so that this is related to that is current leads the voltage by phase angle phi by this is uh, current leads the voltage by 90 degrees here which is the option when we connect it to the capacitor and the current lags behind the voltage by phase angle pi by 2 this is the option when we connect uh, alternating voltage to the inductor and the current and voltage are in the same phase. this is the option when we connect voltage alternating voltage to the resistor so that the correct option is c that is the current and voltage are in the same phase the current leads the voltage by phase angle of pi by 2 so this is absurd now let's go to the next question that is displacement current arises due to we know that the electric field is created by time varying magnetic field and any change in the magnetic flux induces electromotive force this process is known as induction and not only that a constant electric field 
here they have again B in the B option. Constant electric field creates a constant electric current and a wire within a constant magnetic field will always reach an equilibrium state in which there is no current in the wire. So that is for constant magnetic plus. Now, the other option would be time varying electric flux, that is time varying electric field gives us the displacement current. So, option A is the right answer. In the case of total internal reflection, so look at this uh, diagram. See here the light ray is traveling from denser medium to denser medium. So, when it will get total internal reflected? Here. Whenever the light ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium and the angle of incidence in the denser medium is more than the critical angle. At the time, the light ray gets back into the same medium. So, that the our option that is a ray must be traveling from rarer not this is not correct answer a light ray must be traveling from denser to denser to rarer medium. so this is the correct option the angle of incidence must be less than not less than it is it should be more than the critical angle the angle, angle of refraction is zero degree when the angle of incidence is equal to critical angle no it is not correct because we know that angle of refraction is 90 degree when the angle of incidence is equal to critical angle so it is not correct option so our option for this question is b b is the right answer so moving to the next question the phenomenon of bending of light at the corners of an obstacle is called we can say directly it is a diffraction so let's see one by one refraction means this is a phenomenon of change in the path of the light when it passes obliquely from one medium to another medium different opticals whenever the light travels from one medium to another medium it changes its path that is called as refraction then polarization means uh, it is also a phenomenon in which the vibrations of the light wave are restricted to vibrate in a particular plane that is one plane perpendicular to the direction of its propagation next we know that interference is also a phenomenon of redistribution of light energy due to the superposition of two or more light waves refraction is the phenomenon of bending of light around the corners of the obstacle so that our option is d that is d is the right answer next division and germer experiment proved the wave nature of electrons here directly we can say and then particle nature of the electrons is proved by de broglie hypothesis and wave nature of the light is proved by our uh, Hi christian huygens hypothesis huygens principle by using huygens principle we can say that the light having wave nature not only that uh, particle nature of the light given by albert einstein that is the famous effect that is uh, photoelectric effect now let's move to the next question that is uh, among the following which set of nuclei are isotopes we know that isotopes isotope isobars and isotons and we know that the isotopes are the nuclei having the same atomic number but different mass number here among these four alternatives which are having more same atomic number and different mass number here you can see same atomic number and different mass number so this is the correct answer and isobars these are the nuclei having the same mass number but different atomic number so given a and b options are isobars and whereas the d option are metalloids they are not isotones these are nuclei having same neutron number but different atomic number so here you can see this is carbon and nitrogen these are isobars because mass number same but different atomic number and here also b option also same that is mass number is same but different atomic number whereas the option c which are having isotopes and uh, fourth option that is they are metalloids that is silicon and germanium both are showing the both the property that is a uh, metals property as well as non-metal properties next last one that is for an and gate which set of inputs a and b give a high output pi equals to one we know that and gate is the logic gate in which output is equals to one when all the inputs are equals to one here all the input should be equals to one that means our option would be d that is d is the right answer for this question okay moving to the next question uh, that is uh, fill in the blanks question and force between the two point charges in vacuum is given by which law that is coulomb's law we know that so we can write directly it's coulomb's law the magnetic susceptibility of paramagnetic substance is inversely proportional to what temperature Next, the resolving power of microscope can be increased by decreasing the wavelength. Use the S unit of uh, 
activity is peculiar and dash are used as voltage regulator that is zeno diode is used or used zeno diodes are used as regulators okay so let me discuss the b part c part and the numerical problems in my next video okay thank you thanks for watching